Hey Frank, um, I was just wondering, physically first of all, how did everyone make out? Know LeBron was getting worked on on his shoulder there. Yeah, everybody's good to go. And yeah, just I, I know you you have been in this situation before where you guys dropped the game one. Um, what what sort of do you have a process ingrained for that situation, or or what's what was the messaging based on that? We got to be uh, willing to make adjustments, win or lose. Um, so this is no different whether we won game one or lost game one. And uh, the process is to um, you know really study the tape, find ways uh, to be better at, at what we do first, and then uh, discuss uh, you know possible adjustments to offensive. Frozen, hold on. It's going in and out. So there we go. Um, you know adjustments to our offensive approach, uh, defensive coverages, matchups. Uh, personnel that we have in the rotation, um, you know, evaluate all those things and, and decide. You know, uh, we like to discuss them on the first day, uh, let it, let it marinate, and uh, make final decisions uh, for tomorrow morning. All right, everybody, thanks for working with us through these technical difficulties. Let's go ahead and try to continue with Bill Warren. Hey, Frank, let me know if I cut out for you. Um, I'm wondering what you view as Andre's role in, in helping get AD going. Like how can he help um, get AD involved um, more in the offense? Yeah, well, it's not really on uh, Andre to, to get AD involved, um, but he's got to play his part in terms of, um, you know, obviously, you know, his, his primary role offensively is, is uh, you know, to dominate on, on the offensive glass. And to be a screener and roller, and um, you know, to be able to make high-low plays, you know, which uh, you know we didn't put him in enough uh, situations to do that uh, last night. Um, you know, but I'd say those are the three primary roles in his offense in general, but not really his his responsibility to get AD going. Dan Wojcik. Hey Frank, same as Bill. Let me know if if, if you can hear me at yep. some point. Um, I, I think the AD at center lineup. Yesterday was this, the one you used second most. Uh, the NBA data has another like ten minutes, and it was your best lineup. Um, is there? Sure. How, how do you view using that as a weapon? Are there diminishing returns possibly um, with playing it too much? Is it best as sort of a changeup? I guess kind of. How do you decide how often to go to that? There are a lot of lot of factors that, that go into it. Um, you know, and I, I I'm hesitant to to really dive into everything that uh, drives my decision making on that. Uh, because I don't want to tip my hand with uh, what lineups we're going to play tomorrow night, um, you know. But there's there's time where you know our, our size makes more sense on both sides of the ball, and there's si there's times where um, you know being uh, more agile and, and mobile defensively and having more space offensively uh, makes more sense, um, you know. But uh, I statistically I don't think uh, at the five, AD at the five last night. Uh, was as good as it was. Definitely wasn't as good as it was against Golden State. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd argue, you know, what metrics you're looking at in terms of uh, saying it was our best lineup in game one. Dan, please. <clears throat> I'll get over the floor. I just want to argue with Dan, Frank. That's the goal here, argue with you guys. How dare you, Dave? How dare you? Um, Frank, uh, how cognizant? Uh, is LeBron's ankle on your mind, on the team's mind at this point, or is it? Have you gotten to a point now that I think he's played five games on it or something like that since his second stint of recovery, where you know you're, you're moving forward as if he's a healthy player? Yeah, I'm moving forward as if he's a healthy player. Uh, understanding there's going to be a player two throughout the game, um, you know, where he doesn't move on it. Uh, move on it very well, and you know that just that just comes with a guy playing through an injury. Um, you know, ideal situation he has another few weeks to you know fully put it behind him. But you know he's moving he's moving pretty well. Uh, you know, in most situations, and you know I, I, I approach the game like he's a healthy player, and uh, just just understand that there's going to be a handful of plays uh, where it looks like it limit him, limits him. Good afternoon, Frank. What up, BT? I know you've told us that it's not just KCP's job to defend Devin Booker, but how do you guys, as a group, do a better job trying to contain Devin, get a really good game or something? 
Yeah, he, he had a good game, and um, you know we all have to be better. You know, on the, on the ball, and you know you said you answered your own question that it's it's a five man assignment. You know we have coverages in place, and uh, you know KCP is as good as anybody. Um, you know sticking with a guy like Devin, and um, you know but you know elite scorers you have to bring help, and you know there's a lot of creative ways that they get him involved. So it's it's a five man job. You know KCP did a good job, he played 45 minutes. Um, you know, so obviously his numbers are going to be uh, more inflated than you would expect for a regular season game. Um, but we still have to do a, a better job limiting his efficiency. Hey Frank, um, I have a broad question on like mental health and wellness. How would you compare what the mental toll has been like this season compared to the bubble? And what are some of the things you and the guys try to do to navigate through all that? Yeah, you know, I think it's uh, very different than last year's challenge. Um, I would say this this season has been more challenging than last season. Um, you know, even though the duration uh, itself was was hard for all of us in, in the bubble, um, you know, day to day it was sort of like being at camp where it was just basketball and we're all basketball junkies. So, um, you know, aside from being away from our families for that long, you know, it was. Uh, an opportunity to be locked in, but you know, to be to be in the real world, so to speak, and you know, to, to have all these restrictions, um, you know, the the extra mask wearing, the extra uh, uh, testing, the um, you know, the limitations on what you can do at your own practice facility and when you're on the road, and you know, just all the protocols, I think, have uh, really worn a lot of us out. Um, you know, I would say that's definitely the case for myself personally. And uh, but I'm sure it's you know I'm sure it's different than you know for everyone. Um, so I'd say different challenges, uh, but a lot more challenging this year uh, from my perspective. And last question here was going to Yovan. Hey Frank, um, I, I'm curious, how do you view Mark in this series? Because when, when you guys played a couple of weeks ago, uh, you played 18 minutes off the bench and, and led the bench in plus minus. Did, did you see something on film maybe coming into this series that you didn't feel like you would be as effective or, or kind of what maybe changed from, from the last matchup to this one? Well, you know, that game we played Mark and, and Trez together, um, you know, which is a lineup we're not really that familiar with. And, uh, you know, I decided in game one uh, not to use that lineup. Um, I have confidence in all three of our centers, you know, and AD at the five. So, um, you know, if I don't go to a certain player or a certain lineup, a lot of times it's not because of that player. It's just, um, you know, the confidence in another player or, or, or another lineup. And I say that's that's uh, the case with, uh, you know, in terms of Mark not playing in game one. All right, it looks like we will have one quick follow-up from Bill. Uh, thank you, Frank. So, yep. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Frank. Uh, so, assuming you guys are at that 85% threshold that you talked about yesterday, um, are you guys going to get your party on tonight? Like, what's the, what's the team plan now that some of those restrictions are, are eased, uh, you know, being able to be together as a team? <clears throat> I don't even know, to be honest with you. I haven't, I haven't even thought about it. I've uh, been locked into, you know, studying the... You know, the evaluations of game one, but you know, I'm sure I'm sure we'll huddle up and, and see if there's things we can do uh, tonight. You know, the players a lot of times do things on their own. You know what I mean? So uh, I think that's a question for the for the guys. Um, you know, hopefully they'll be getting together. And you know, in terms of what I do with my staff, uh, that's to be determined.